painting materials, what, how, and why. So let's start off with the palette. So what I use is a turtle wood palette. This is a turtle wood wooden palette. Now, not the type of wood, but the name of the brand that makes this palette. There's another brand called New Wave palettes, and I also use those palettes as well, but this is just kind of the one that, I don't know, I, I kind of like to use for these more recent videos. And here you can see the paints that are still out from my last painting session that I uh, had earlier today. So another thing you can use is a glass palette. So this is just a regular sheet of replacement glass that I just took from, uh, I don't honestly, I don't remember where, I think it was some type of home improvement store. And all I did was spray paint the back gray. You can tell um, it's kind of peeling off in some corners. And uh, you want to be kind of careful with the edges, however. I am holding it uh, very cautiously so I don't uh, scratch myself. Paints. What is it? Artist grade oil paint. How do I use it? Painting. Why do I use it? Artist grade paints are, they, they have a little bit more consistency to them than student grade paints, meaning the ratio of pigment to oil is a little bit uh, better with artist grade oil paints. These are Gamblin's, these three, and this is actually the Zorn palette. Zorn palette is a four color palette that can really optimize the amount of uh, flesh tones you can get with such a small, um, a small array of colors. Flake white. What is it? It is a lead based white. How? I use it by applying it to the paint, but the only difference is the consistency of the flake white is such that I can use more of it without raising the value too much, thus building more of the body to the oil paint. Why? I kind of just answered that because I want more of the body to the oil paint. So that is the oil paint, what, how, and why. Brushes, what do I use? Here is a, a very simple kind of grouping of them. So what do I use? Bristles synthetics, round synthetics, and a fan brush. The fan brush I use, so let's start off with the how, so the what, how, and why. So how do I use the fan brush? In the painting, just kind of very lightly make a mark in the direction of the light so that I have less of a glare. So that's it for the fan brush. The filbert, or sorry, the flat bristle brush, this is a bristle brush, I use it when I want to load much more paint onto the paintbrush. So I use this when there's a quite a bit of paint that I want to apply on that certain area. This is a Princeton Catalyst Poly Tip Bristle. Princeton Catalyst Poly Tip Bristle. It is a bristle synthetic mix and it is my favorite type of brush to use. Round synthetic, this is the Master's Touch brand. Doesn't really matter to be honest. I have some Princeton's, I have, I've even used some Artist Loft brand uh, round brushes. Now why? So I like to use a round brush when I'm kind of getting into some of the smaller shapes in certain areas. And I can get kind of a fine point to it just like a graphite pencil. Mineral spirits and brush cleaner. What, how, and why? What is this? This is Citrus Essence Brush Cleaner. How? Applying it to, applying it into a container, using it to clean the brush, dipping the brush into it, and then dabbing it dry on paper towel. We'll get to the paper towel afterwards. Why? Why do I use the Citrus Essence Brush Cleaner? Simply because I, uh, some of my artist friends have used Spike Lavender and it is, it has the property, Spike Lavender has a property that helps the paint dry faster. My theory is that Citrus Essence kind of does the same thing. There's another thing to it. I wonder if you can read it here. So let's see. No carcinogenic fumes. 
no petroleum, no turpentine. So no carcinogens, basically. So essentially it's supposed to be safer for you and I have no windows in my studio. So there's quite a bit of fumes in my studio. Um, that's not the main reason I use it, however. I would like to use it because it dries faster. That's the why. Mineral spirits, what, how, and why? Same thing as the citrus essence that I showed you. This kind of, this container is pretty used up. Uh, mineral spirits, exactly the same as the citrus essence brush cleaner. The only difference is that it, um, you really, you want some windows around you when you use this. Medium, what, how, and why? This is Liquin Original. How? I just put it on the palette. I just put it on the palette right there and just kind of dab the brush into it and then mix like that. So why Liquin Original? I use it because I ran out of Neo McGilp and because it is a fast drying medium. Regardless of Neo McGilp, this medium has proved to work really nicely for what I want it to do. So what it does is it thins out the paint which increases the fluidity of the paint without making it too uh, fluid, like if you were only using your mineral spirits. So it increases the fluidity and it helps the paint dry faster. That is why I use this. Mall stick. So this was actually a selfie stick and I just broke off the top of it and decided that it would make a good mall stick. Now how do I use it? I lean my arm up against it and then hold my arm straight while I'm painting. That's how I use it. Why do I use it? I kind of just answered that actually. Just to hold my hand straight. You don't really need this. Paper towels. What, how, and why? What is this? This is Viva-like cloth or cloth-like paper towels from Viva. So this is Viva brand. How do I use it? by dabbing the brush with the mineral spirits on the paper towel. And I also use it sometimes as an eraser. I'll take a piece of it off and then kind of rub across the painting and use it kind of like an eraser. Why? So why do I use Viva paper towels? I use Viva paper towels uh, because they, they hold up pretty well and they don't fall apart like some other, um, like some other paper towel brands. And so my easel, what, how, and why. This is a Julian Paris, it says easel. This is one of those easels, it's like a, a field easel. It's a box, you can just take it apart and uh, take it out, plein air painting and stuff like that. How? The legs are broken. So therefore it is now a table easel. And just move these things around to hold your canvas and there you go, that's the how. Why? I think um, I like the look of wooden easels a little bit more over metallic ones. I had a metal one earlier, but I, I don't know. I just feel like it has a, a nicer look, like the brown in comparison to like the dark fabrics in my background. The next thing to talk about are painting surfaces. So this is your standard kind of a panel that I use. This is a, actually a store-bought, uh, it's called Gesso Board. This is actually my favorite kind of uh, panel to paint on. So what is it? gesso board. How? Paint on it. Why? Because it's very slim. I can compact it with a bunch of other paintings and uh, it's really smooth so it applies a really smooth finish. Canvas. What, how, and why? So what is this? This is a oil primed linen 11 by 14 inch canvas. How? Paint on it. Why? I use it because, well, it has a nice consistency to it. The linen really does absorb the paint a little bit more than a cotton canvas. Now here's a cotton canvas. What, how, and why? This is a cotton canvas. How? Paint on it. Why? It's inexpensive and it takes the paint pretty well after applying a layer of oil paint to tone it. For instance, this one that we're working on currently um, this is a large cotton canvas. This is the large painting that we've been working on each day in the studio. This is a large cotton canvas. If this were linen, this 
not even going to imagine how much it would cost. But this is a large cotton canvas that I toned with oil paint before painting it. So I'm going to walk you around now and give you a little studio tour. So my studio, um, it's, it's very tiny. But you know what? It gets the job done. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the artwork. So this is the painting that is going on. In, so this is the painting in progress. This is the one that we're working on um, every single day. Moving on over. This is a painting that I created with a art group called the, um, the Hood Portrait Group and at Hood College. So this was a painting, uh, this was also painted on a cotton canvas. Most of these, if not almost all of these, are painted on cotton canvas. I'll get you some close-up shots. And don't worry, we'll be doing more paintings like this one in our video series. Here's another one. You're, you should be familiar with this one. This is the one where I was filming with my art group. Sorry, I'm trying to hold the camera steady. So this is the one that I was filming with my art group where I couldn't really get the footage correct. Here's a good old Rembrandt, still a work in progress. And you can't really see this one too well, so let's go ahead and move some of this stuff. So here's another painting that was created at the Hood Group the uh, Hood College in Frederick, Maryland oh, quite a while ago so my style of painting was a little different. Moving on over and again these are only just a few paintings that I have lying around. I have a bunch more but I think these are probably the better ones. So here's another painting and um, it was created with my Tuesday morning group. My Tuesday morning group, the same group where this one is being developed, well, where the photo references were taken for this one. So that is that. This one was painted in a more alla prima style fashion. You can see kind of the, uh, the tattoos and stuff that were painted on after. Hopefully I'm not shaking the camera too much. Here's another one. This was painted even longer ago. Um, this was painted with an artist named Karen Warshaw. I was painting in her studio and it was long ago back then, I think about a year, almost two years ago, where I got the idea of making a video series of painting in the, uh, basically being in the studio every single day. You can see the hands. So there's one all the way up here. I don't really feel like going any closer to it because I'm gonna crash, crash into some stuff. So this was also painted with my Tuesday morning group, the same group where this was painted. So I think this was the pose just before that one. And you can see how I kind of spent a while on the, uh, on the fabrics and stuff. Like I usually say, details are nothing. So to be honest, all of those designs were probably the easiest thing to figure out for that painting. And with that, I hope that this video helps you out and I hope it answers a lot of the questions involving my the, the materials, what, how, and why I use certain materials. That being said, it is my hope, my dream, and my ambition to bring the experience of being here in the studio creating these paintings every single day. So I wish you the best in all of your artwork and as always, I'll be back again tomorrow. Cotton canvas. What, how, and why? What is this? It is a cotton canvas. How? Paint on it. Why? It's not a cotton canvas. I messed up. This is a linen canvas in uh, all of my videos. And I do list the materials I use down in the des description box. Uh, blah, 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 blah. best in all of your artwork and as always it is my hope my dream and my ambition to bring the experience of being here in the painting here in the painting <laughs> oh man cut <laughs>